Hello, everyone. This is the maybe the last class before the final presentation. So maybe it will be the last two videos that I will be uploading for, for this class. So we are almost done. We are about to do the things that we always do in the end, which is writing the introduction and the abstract. But although this is the last thing, is maybe one of the most important things where we have to be very careful when writing because I think maybe 99% of the time people only read the introduction, the abstract, and luckily the introduction. Only, I think only 1% of the people are so interested on in your paper that they will read it completely. So usually people from the reads that you will have online, like maybe you have a thousand reads, from those 1000 reads, 900, 90 and 90 people only read the introduction and the abstract and maybe only 10 people read the whole paper maybe it's a lot maybe you maybe from 1000 maybe 20 or 25 read the whole thing but that those are the numbers usually that's what we actually did i think when you look at the at the literature maybe you read a hundred different papers and maybe you end up reading completely maybe about five or six because those were the very the, the the very important papers for your work so let me uh, com continue with what is the introduction and i will do another video about the abstract and and i can give you some hints and tips about how to write the these two sections that are super important so first what is the introduction well the introduction is a summary of everything of everything that you did but in not only the, the case study, but also a summary of the literature, also a summary of the contributions. It's literally a summary of everything. And I, I learned in a seminar, I think two or three years ago, a really nice way to write an introduction. It is it's like um, an, instructions, an instruction manual on how to write introduction. It's, it's not like you should follow it completely, but I think it helps a lot. I actually like all of my introductions since then, have this structure and it and it it was a good a good idea because since then i think like the 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 reviewers and the editors have never had a problem with the with the introduction so let, let me give you this these tips about the introduction usually the introduction should have at least these four paragraphs okay so it usually has these four paragraphs the first one is a brief summary of, of what has been done I will explain in an example about this. But here you should write in, imagine in just one paragraph, what has been done. Like maybe you say uh, the implementation of new technologies, if that's your case, or digital transformation in the construction industry has been analyzed in this and blah, blah, blah. But imagine in one paragraph, you should summarize what has been done. So you can say, um, they have you. They have studied this and this. They, maybe the um, the thing about investment and technology adoption, and um, and they have brought these results. Okay, like maybe digital transformation. It's a lot about methodologies and it's a lot about control and a lot about bureaucracy. I don't know things like that. Okay, so this is the first paragraph. Then in the next paragraph, in the second paragraph, you should make a clear statement of what has not been done. So you are kind of problem problematizing the literature okay so you're bringing up the problems that are in the literature you're making it problematic i think you read that paper uh, about uh, uh, about kind of writing the research question to me i think you wrote this you read about this on first partial but this is how you kind of uh, highlight that there is a problem with the current understanding of your topic so in this one you say this topic has been studied in this way and they concluded this thing but then you say like although it has been studied in this and this and they concluded this it hasn't um, or it's not clear what happens under these circumstances or this context or it's not clear what will happen if digital transformation is done with people who doesn't have enough um, uh, digital talent for example if that is the case so you you, you bring the questions into here, you bring the problems in here in this second paragraph. And then once that is clear, that you convince the reader that, okay, it, this is already known, but it's not clear if what will happen or how would it work in this thing. So what did you do? This is what you have to explain on 
paragraph three. You have to explain what did you do in your study. So you are going to say uh, a study in a, a case study was carried out using this framework in order to understand the relationship or or in order to explain how does management control works in or during digital transformation, things like that. And then in here, when you explain what are you doing, you, you, you can be specific, not super specific because you only have one paragraph, but you can say, we talk about, or we did a case study of a single company or multiple companies or two companies, comparative case study. And then we did interviews. Sorry, I always say it in first person, but remember it's not in first person. You said like, this study was used carrying out inter semi-structure interviews or uh, visits to the company, something like that. And finally, the last paragraph is about your findings and contribution because you need to summarize what did you find from that study? What did you contribute to the understanding that wasn't clear because of this? <coughs> Sorry. You need to kind of uh, close in the gap between this problem and then what you did. And finally, but only if you want, this is optional, you can write a summary of the paper. Like some people say like, this is the introduction, this is the first section. So the next section is the literature review. The first section we have methodology, fourth section we have the case study. Then we discuss the case study in the fifth section and the final section concludes the paper. Something as simple as that can be in here, but it's optional. It depends on how long your paper already is. If it's too short, you can uh, add it in there. If it's already too long, you can skip it. I will upload uh, the, the, the paper that I wrote on that seminar. This is the introduction that I wrote. So as you can see, the paragraphs are quite long and it's okay. And as you can see, I have a lot of references. Those are the references that later I unpacked in the literature review, but it is like this. I mean, like um, you, you mentioned how this topic has been studied, the conclusions from them, blah, 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 blah. And here I say, however, this study assume blah, blah, blah. So I am kind of making a problem from this. I, I think their assumptions are wrong or maybe their assumptions are not entirely correct. And then I say what I did. I used this scale of materialism and then I did a survey, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, this is what I found. So the, the literature still has some problems. And then uh, the main contribution of my paper is this. I, I included this other thing. So I kind of solved the issue that they had from here by adding this other um, um, this other variable that I think that was kind of my contribution on that paper. So um, this this is about the introduction. I will write. I will do another video about the abstract just to uh, finish with the the next thing. Uh, and I think we are done with the introduction.